All right, so I'm going to save this, and we'll um, go into the last exercise, which is, as I was saying, looking at how we might represent uh, our attractors and the corresponding expressions that we've used to uh, modify those attractors, not by modifying a discrete or a single element, but how it's actually going to give us a more continuous understanding of their influence. The way we're going to do that is that we're going to use surfaces, right? Surfaces um, are one type of NURBS geometry in Rhino, and they're defined by a two-dimensional parameter space. So all surfaces have to be uh, organized relative to a U and V control cage, right? Your control points create a control cage that are um, organized in two directions, U and V. So every one of your control points, let's say it's the intersection of these grid lines, has a relationship to the one on either side of it and the one on top and bottom of it in the U and V directions. All right, so if, you, if you've worked a lot with surfaces in Rhino, this should look pretty familiar. If you turn the control points on of a surface, you have this rectilinear grid of dotted lines that indicate how the control points are related to the adjacent control points. And as an overall collection of um, control objects, they're kind of linked into what's called a control cage. And again, that's in two directions, U and V. The nice thing about that is that you can have relatively few controls or control points, but you can get smooth interpolated surfaces. Now, smooth, interpolated, uh, smooth and interpolated are two great uh, qualities that you can use with attractors in order to get something that is more even as a distribution of influence. So in this case, what we're going to get is not necessarily like the result where each point is then registered against the attractors, but if we go through a surface first, we can get a kind of continuous distribution of curves that show us the result of those attractors. All right, so again, we're going to build on this file once more. Um, just to give you uh, the preview of where we're going, here's the file that we're going to make. This is all the new stuff, right, which is just going to be a different place to move from the uh, vectors that we created and the base points. Just make these few collection of objects, and then we'll be able to have our, the result of our final exercise. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, again, the last file we've been working with because it's been set up with, um, together with you. And let's save as 1, 5, Tractors and discretion, uh, expressions dash contours. Working. All right, and it's 4:26, and the webinar is supposed to end at uh, 4:30, but we start a couple minutes late, so we'll try and wrap up in about 10 minutes. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to uh, this collection of objects. This is what we did in our last file, and I'm going to go ahead and just delete them. All right, so I should be back to my vectors, which are here, being influenced by my attractor points. And I still, hopefully I still have this down here in the file. If not, I'll show you how to re remake that. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go back from uh, points into a surface, right? So if we have these points in space, uh, we can recreate a surface from them um, by um, looking at the surface tab under primitive, sorry, under freeform, surface from points. This creates a NURB surface from a grid of points. Now in the example file, I think I used a rectilinear grid or a square grid, and here we have a triangular grid, but let's try it and see if it works. Okay, so here's our object, which is surface from points. It asks for the grid of points, but notice how it asks for them as a list. U is the number of points in the U direction, and I is an option on whether or not you want to interpolate it, right, to smooth it out. And that sounds good to us, so let's, uh, let's interpolate it. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, figure out what needs to go into this object. P are our points. That's the grid of points. So let's go ahead and connect that to, to P, or I guess if we wanted to just create a surface from the points we have, we would connect it to P, but if we did that, we'd be missing the key step, right? So what we want to do is actually, we're going to use this set of points, 
and the vectors here coming from our attractors. We're going to use the vectors as a way to move the original points in the z direction and then recompose the surface. All right, so we're going to hit pause on using this object for now. The first thing we need to do is we need to take our original points and move them up in the z. All right, now we know that our attractors, right, the vectors coming from them are decaying, right, as you move away from them. So back here at the far edge, these are going to be uh, have smaller lengths, and here they're going to be larger lengths. That's good. So we're going to take the property of the vector length and use it as a way to drive the z height of each one of these points. So let's go to the vector vector sub tab, and let's go to the vector length object and drop that in. So our average is going to come from here, and this is now going to give us a numerical value for each one of our points that describes the vector length. We're then going to take these points here, the grid points, and we're going to move under transform, Euclidean, move. We're going to move the grid points using this vector length to determine that they should go in the z direction. So in between here and here, we need to connect our from vector, vector, unit z object. So here the vector length determines how long the z vector should be. And that allows us to move our points up in space. So you should get something like this as a result of your move. Points that are kind of creating these little peaks near the attractors. All right, so I'll turn the preview off here. Remember, we're moving our original grid points, so it's coming all the way back from here in the file. This is our vector length. This is the unit Z vector. And this is our move object. Okay, now we can start to work with this guy. All right, we're going to take G, which is our points, connect that into our P input. Now, when we put our mouse over P, it says points as a list. So what that means is we need to get all of our points back down onto one list, because right now each point is on its own list. So do you remember how we can change the data structure so that all of our points go back onto one list? You got it. We're going to right-click P and say flatten, right? Okay, so now our points are on a list. The next thing is, what are the number of points in the U direction? Well, that's going to come all the way from our original set of sliders. Back here, the X number, that's going to go into U, right? So connect all the way across. And in order to try and keep my wires nice and tidy, I'm going to right-click U and say the wire display should be faint. That way it doesn't create a big tangled mess of wires. All right, and then lastly, we can go to the params input tab and choose a Boolean toggle. And this will allow us to specify if we want true or false for interpolate as an option for I. So I'll hit, I'll hit true. And what I should get is a representation of a surface in the Rhino viewport. Right now, if it looks jagged, that's okay. That's just Grasshopper trying to make a simple preview for you. And we're it's actually a nice smooth surface. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to take that the last um, we don't need this. We can delete that. We're going to take that surface and we're going to create the contours through it. So if we go to uh, intersect mathematical Contour. This allows us to specify what we want to contour, the shape, what the start point is, the normal direction, which by default is in the Z, that's what we want, and the distance between contours. So all this sounds good. We're going to take our surface into S, the contour start point. Okay, we're going to have to come back to that. Normal direction is okay, and distance between contours. So here, let's specify a slider. 
and be careful not to make it too small to start because it's got to calculate a lot of intersections. Um, and if it's a really small value, that's going to take a little while. Your computer might slow down. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is just specify a contour start point. So let's go ahead and go to the vector tab, point, point x, y, z. And this is going to create a default point at 0, 0, 0. So we can just plug that into P. So now as I bring my slider down and make the distance between my contours smaller, I'm going to get a different result. Now this is actually pretty interesting. Because we chose a triangular grid, we're getting uh, a kind of wavy line as a result uh, from our contouring. Um, that's interesting. If you wanted to, you could go back through and clean those up under the curve tab. You could uh, you could do smooth polyline or reduce right, as a way to make it more smooth. Or you could go back and uh, modify your triangular grid to be a rectangular or, or uh, square grid. All right, so I'm going to leave it like this so we have a second option to look at uh, from uh, that's different from the files we gave you originally. And um, that's all we were trying to do with, the, with this uh, exercise, is to look at how we might understand in another way the influence of a set of attractors on a pattern where we're looking at objects that are continuously describing the field as opposed to individually describing the field in the last file. So I'll go through and label, um, label my file here with uh, the last set of objects that we used. This was surface from points. And this was my contour. This is my contour distance. This is just a point X, Y, Z. Okay, and we'll take um, a couple of uh, minutes to um, answer any questions you might have. Uh, if you have any related to this last file, go ahead and drop drop them into the question window. Window. We'll spend a couple more minutes talking about uh, the answers to your questions, and then we'll wrap up the webinar. Okay, someone asked about um, the U space and the U value from our service from points. This is coming all the way back from the X number back here. Okay, smoothing the curves. As a result, what we're going to be getting is polylines. So we could take the uh, reduce object from curve utilities. Let's see. Let's see what we have coming out of here. So let's check the output by taking a panel. Closed planar curve, closed planar curve. All right, one, one way we could get around this is that we could say, let's take the curve and find its control points. See how we have like lots and lots and lots of points. So one thing we could do is we could um, we could remove them, or we could say divide those curves by length so that they always get divided by a specific length, which gives us far fewer points. And then we could rebuild them as an interpolate curve. Okay. So this is basically approximating the original curve or not. And the only thing we'd have to do is test to see if originally it was closed. And if so, go ahead and close it. Again, if we're wanting to do contours, we might just go all the way back to the beginning here and change this out for a quad grid. So I'll put this in the file, and I'll make notes for um, these additional options for you guys. Um, 
and those will be the second round of files that we distribute when all of the videos are up uh, on the web from the webinar. Okay. I think there's maybe one more question. Okay, so um, pattern on surface. Um, if you wanted to create uh, something like this, right, on a surface, there are a number of ways that you can move from a pattern that is, let's say, on the in the world in the x y coordinate system back to the surface, or you could actually. Um, start with the surface and start to work with patterning on the surface. And that would be uh, similar to what we did um, earlier where we had a surface that looked uh, kind of like this. And we used the divide points as a way to start with creating our grid on our surface. So that's something that, um, that if you're interested in, you can email us about. Uh, and also check out some of our other uh, webinar videos that uh, would go more into surface space and how you could um, start to create more patterns on surfaces. And uh, another thing that you could do is actually, as opposed to working from the original surface, if you had the previous file open, you could translate this information onto a surface, right, which would have to do with taking the points of every one of these and going from them being in the world, right, X, Y, Z points, to U, V, W points, which would be on a surface. Um, so what I'll do is, um, if you're interested in that, um, I will add an additional file to the instructor files that I'll build separately um, so we don't run too far over on the webinar, and I'll add that as a... Um, as another file that you can reference um, after the conclusion of the webinar. But those are really great questions.